All right, hey, guess what? We are live on Twitch. We're I'm gonna like start. On coffee. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Twitch stream for Action Against Hunger fundraiser, brought to you by the Thread Raiders. Today, uh, right now, actually, not just today, but we are going to do a live presentation of the Thread Raiders podcast. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thread Raiders podcast. My name is David Steele, along with my wonderful co-hosts. Chaotic Anarchy. I am TK, the Kilted Sea Lord of this podcast. Yes. And we're all jealous of his fancy name, the Kilted Sea Lord. <laughs> and we have a very special guest with us today. We're going to let him introduce himself. He is also the uh, co-sponsor for this Action Against Hunger fundraiser. In case you haven't seen his little logo everywhere. RPG Kitchen. So please, sir, introduce yourself. Trying to get the fingers pointing in the right uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lag, so I can't... <laughs> uh yeah i'm adam from rpg kitchen hi thanks Hello. for having me on and uh my goodness uh, yes let's do it Exciting. don't look at yourself too much you get you get like scared you're like oh my god i'm live <laughs> i'm on tv they see me What's happening? so so adam tell me where are you from because you say you got a little accent there it's not english what is that yeah go, go blind me governor i'm from london town Ooh. Are you from London? No, I'm not from London. No, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I was just saying, no, it doesn't sound, it's it's not English. Where are you uh, from? Actually, you may be surprised that uh, it is an English accent. Where about, though? Uh, Cambridge. Okay, okay. I mean, it's, it's not quite, yeah, it's not like a, it doesn't uh, sound like a, is there a reason it sounds a little different to me, or is it just because I'm an idiot? <laughs> well, it's not an accent you're used to, mate. It's true. We don't get to hear it a lot. It's not your traditional British. You're right, right. That's what I mean. So is everybody from your town uh, have the same kind of accent, or is it just something unique for you? It's, yeah, it's pretty unique. Yeah. Is, I mean, is there a reason for that? Sorry? Is there a reason for that you can think of that why you, have you been traveled a lot, or where'd your accent come from? I don't know. I think I've just uh, picked up from too much role playing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I stupid questions come into my head because you know that, yeah. that kind of stuff no, intrigues no, me. No such thing as a so stupid I've, I've been lucky enough to travel a fair bit. Um, yeah. And I've got family over in Australia. People say I sound Australian sometimes. Yes, that, that's what I'm picking up. No, nah, okay. I don't sound Australian, mate. Nah. Yeah, yeah, mate. There you go. <laughs> now, now you're messing with my head now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I remember um, uh, it's been, uh, you don't remember me, but because the social media uh, lifestyle on, on Twitter. I always remember you, sir. Always remember you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but we, we met online. Just basically, we I started following you uh, three, four years ago, RPG Kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Empire awesome. Steel and, uh, and David O'Steel, myself, my personal uh, Twitter account. Um, and then so... Tell me now, RPG Kitchen, how, like, I don't know, you were on Twitter probably before I was. Where'd that come from? What's that name imply? Okay, so the uh, <laughs> the real short version, the way it came about in the first place, uh, I was building this uh, super cool tool to do, like, an editor for creating tabletop role-playing game system books, because that's easy to say. And... Uh, I needed a domain name and I was going through and they just introduced the new top level domains and I was searching for RPG something <laughs> and then RPG Kitchen came up and I thought, yeah, that sounds awesome. I'll have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. That awesome. Um, and that's how it actually originated. Uh, yeah. That was, I think, a good year or two before it became a, a, a kind of charitable project. It, it actually existed in some way before that for quite some time. You know, I remember uh, early on you had a, you were trying a, a website. You were doing a uh, you had like some kind of blog or, or, or like a um, forum going on. I remember going on there in the beginning stages of that. Um, what was your goal with that? Did it morph into what you're doing now? Uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been a whole part of the process. So um, yeah, I, I built some forums. Um, 
have this terrible habit because I'm a developer. I make websites. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, it's very easy to go right. I've got a problem. Let's go build something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. How I code like that. Um, nice. And, uh, then you build something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes if I really fast. Yeah. I get I get interrupted. Do you do you guys remember that that GIF? Is that how you say? It? Do you guys say GIF or JIF? Yeah. It's GIF, right? Yeah. yeah. I hear some people say JIF. I'm like, what the hell are you talking? It's what? not peanut butter. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a G. I don't it's know. It's like a gift. But you ever see that the, the GIF where the one like you just did that thing with the hands? It's the, it's the like the stick figure guy, and he's like smashing until his his hands become like nubs, right? Did you ever see that one? <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah. <laughs> I just picture you doing like <laughs> it's all bloody. <laughs> so funny. So so yeah. So then now I went on. I was checking out. I actually stole some graphics from you um, for our ad that <laughs> well, we have or, or on your website. Um, I love the I, I love the header you have there. Really cool artwork. Yeah, so who did the artwork? artwork? Yeah. Sorry. Where did you get the artwork from? Did you do it yourself? Uh, did you hire someone? Uh, yeah, I hired someone off of Twitter, and this is going to kill me now. I can't remember their name right now. I'm sure it'll come That's okay. Late. Well, while we're talking, look it up. See if you can uh, maybe find it. That way we can give them a shout-out. But um, I, so the the website, looking at it, you got um, you have a Patreon too, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been live just over a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, but it looks like it was made like your whole thing was from the beginning rpg kitchen was the name you chose for this endeavor that you're doing and you know feed the feed the hobby um feed the hungry right is that is that what it is yeah okay, so, so um good it was a beautiful coincidence so like i said i started off making this editor um and it was for people who wanted to make tabletop role-playing system books mm -hmm. um, and it did handy things like renaming stuff like Oh, I want to have a scout. No, hang on. That no, I, I really am gonna just copy D and D and have a rogue and rename it everywhere. Anyway, that's how it started, and I got a bit um, disenfranchised with it. I was thinking this is gonna help maybe six people in the world ever. You know, who cares? <laughs> um, but I was having a great dinner conversation with someone once, and I realised that um, I could make it a charitable project. I could, you know, use the proceeds from it to go to a good cause. Uh, so it was like, oh, I could, you know, it's already called RPG Kitchen. Uh, let's use it to feed the hungry because that would be brilliant. That would be yeah, awesome. Yeah, it um, is. And it, it's, it's a bit like fate because it, you, you can't believe that it wasn't already like a hunger charity to start with. Uh, no yeah. That if it wasn't a hunger charity. So I think it's fate. It was something yeah. calling, something telling me. Um, and from that point on, I think it was actually in that conversation, it just came to me, feed the hobby, feed the hungry. It's like, there you go, boom. Yeah, yeah, I love that because I, I was really taken aback when I was checking out the the website to steal your graphics, um, <laughs> you know, for the stream, and I was just like, wow, because I remember, I said, I remember him from a few, you know, when we first, when I first started following you, and I don't remember it being the charity thing. I'm like, wow, that's it's just amazing how that worked out. Like you said, fate. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very amazing. Now, Action Against Hunger, um, I knew that from CA, and we did it last year. Is that the one fundraiser you do, or do you do follow and, and raise funds for other charities? At the moment, it's just Action Against Hunger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I chose them because they are international, yeah. and they help address the causes of hunger. That's why I chose them. So mm -hmm. at the moment, just supporting them, yeah. Well, actually, Fantastic. we did Extra Life last year. This is the first time doing Action Against Hunger. I could have swore we did it yeah. no, in the middle we did of the year. RPG Kitchen, um, as a thank you for doing our sponsorship, we decided we would help raise money for their cause. Oh, so maybe we were just talking about it all year. Yeah. All you're building all up. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> I could have swore we, because there was one fundraiser you guys did that I wasn't involved in. Didn't you just do one? Stink Razor? That's it then. Okay, okay. All right. All right. I'm out of the loop. I know. <laughs> we, we've done, we started with uh, Extra Life last year. And that yes. And kind of kicked off to how many charity events can we feasibly do before CA and I die? <laughs> <laughs> and I went to, you know, I was like, you guys have to sleep. And then me with my, you know, many cans of monsters sitting around from this weekend. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So tell us how the library works. Oh, yes. Mm, nice. Uh, yeah, so um, wonderful people from the community uh, put their 
books into the library. Uh, I say they put it into their library. It's it's all electronic. It's PDFs. Um, and then patrons can view those. They can't download them because that would be a yeah, thing for the library, people who created it if people can just download it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the money from the Patreon uh, gets split between uh, Hunger Charity and uh, the the people with the content. Nice. Which, to be fair, I uh, I need to be better on uh, sharing the money. It's just at the moment it's it's uh, <laughs> what's the word? Oh yeah, running at a loss. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, you're working to becoming a nonprofit, and that's very very expensive. Yes, yeah, yeah, I've actually been doing quite a bit of research into that because there, in the UK there are a few different ways to be a charity mm -hmm. um, and looking into that and the, the various options that are available to, to do that because, yeah, it, it can cost quite a lot of money and at, at some point you think, well, until I'm making a certain amount of money, there's no point because that money will just be going to waste almost. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, there's going to be a point somewhere where it's going to be like, yeah, now it's now it's time. But I'm, yeah. I'm starting to investigation well now ca you brought that up but and now i'm curious so what do you mean by that both of you guys uh why does it cost so much money to get started when you're trying to do a non-profit to raise funds like what, what what's the cost involved well it's pretty much like the government wants to make sure you're not ripping them off right. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of paperwork involved um not to mention i think it's around like 900 dollars here to get into becoming a non-profit to start off with and then um, they also recommend that you have a lawyer also, which uh, can get very expensive just and to make sure you cross all the I's. Accountants and uh, mm -hmm. filing fees aren't included in that $900. Mm -hmm. The filing fees are, I think, uh, $36 per file. Gotcha. And you have to file like 12 things. That, that's, that adds up quick. Right, right, and right, you, right. you are here in the States, you have to get like checked up each year. So they want to make sure you're not doing anything crazy with your taxes. And if you hire people, it gets even more complicated. Um, wow. So it's just little things here and there. It seems to really just add up. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I just noticed, um, I'm looking at the overlay that you can put together, uh, CA. It's just, you got the vegetables. Right. All, it's like a <laughs> chopping block. It's really cool. I'm so glad you noticed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And no one said anything. And I was like, guys, we're vegetables. I'm like, yeah, it's food. It's so board. cool. Yeah. <laughs> get it? <laughs> I get it. That is very, very cool. Cool. Uh, I know what my next D&D one shot is going to be. Good. Yep, everyone's just going to be vegetables. You have to escape the cut. Oh, God. <laughs> I now know what I, I Veggie tales. Veggie tales, yeah. It would be great, and we could sing all the songs. We meet with Smitty. I know what challenge one of the challenges in the Carnival of Horrors is going to be now. Where oh my I god! <laughs> so now, what time is it over over there over the pond? Uh, it's twenty to four. Four a.m. or 4 p. 4 p. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. four p.m. p.m. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Not too bad. I know a lot of times it's it's real difficult. You know, we try to stream with people from in the time zones. Ah, oh, what a pain in the neck. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping to do one of the games, uh, one of your games last night, but it was it would be starting at 1 a.m. or something here, and yeah. um, I'm not quite as uh, mad or as uh, <laughs> simple. <laughs> yeah. Kind of go through the night, just bam, and do it. Oh, you're great, right, mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to be a little mad to be doing that, sure. No doubt. So, so where do you... We... Okay. Oh, sorry. So no, if go. we are creators and we want to be a part of your library, how yeah. do we do that? How do, is there a process behind it? Uh, pretty much just email me or contact me on Twitter. Um, I just need a few details, uh, like a company logo, uh, any links you, you like, uh, including where possible, I link things back to drive through or wherever it's available for sale. Okay. Just in case someone goes, oh, okay, I've kind of borrowed this from the library, but I'd like to own it. Nice. So I'll, I'll hop over to drive through or itch or whatever and go and buy it. And that helps promote the community, which is awesome. Yeah. So one thing I'd like to do more of is uh, at the moment, uh, if you're a subscriber, if you're a Patreon, a patron, sorry, you can go and see everything. But if you're not, uh, there's a couple of things in there which anyone can see, but you can't preview anything. If 
you can't like see, see the few, first few pages. That's mm -hmm. one thing I'd like to do is make it so that people who aren't subscribers can see the first few pages or maybe see, you know, a snapshot or highlights or something. Right. So that they can go, oh, yeah, do you know what? I like the look of that. I'll go buy it or something. Um, I, want, I kind of want to help out with that thing of, I'm not sure if this is for me. Uh, can I see a little bit of it? Obviously not get the whole lot because that would be crazy. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, I wonder if I like this. Here it is. There you go. There, have it. It's like, yeah, I like that. Thanks. Bye. Um, right. But yeah, a little preview or promo would, uh, would be great. I'd love to uh, spend a bit more time on that. Yeah. Now, is it only like RPG related material or can you have like other gaming material in there or maybe art books that are related to RPGs? Yeah, it's a variety of things. So there's, I think, just the one art book in there at the moment. Okay. Uh, brilliant. The um, team Yaringen, who I, I said I can't pronounce their name, the lovely people behind Simbarum, um, they've, they've really supported us. And uh, their art book is in there, along with some of their other books, which is brilliant. Um, it is, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's all sorts. We've got some uh, characters. We've got some items. Um some whole systems and uh, scenarios. There's all sorts, all sorts in there. Yeah, and one of our thread writers is actually in your library, Death by Mage. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So how does the uh, newsletter work? Ah, so the newsletter. Um, that's been uh, really nice the last few months. It so, has been, yeah. Uh, there's some really cool stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically... Uh, Crime that on Twitter has been brilliant. I, I got him on board as a, uh, the editor for it, and he's been brilliant. Uh, but basically, we go out to the community. We say, hey, we're putting together this newsletter. Um, have you got a snippet we can put in it? And it could be, again, a class, a magic item, a scenario, a map, some art. It could be you know pretty much anything uh, role-playing related that's digital that you can put in a PDF. Mm -hmm. And then that goes out each month to the subscribers. Um, unfortunately, we missed August because we didn't have uh, enough content to put out. Mm -hmm. Also, um, Nat had a holiday, which I think was very rude of him. But... <laughs> <laughs> How dare you celebrate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it happens. Uh, but now that's been brilliant. We've, we've had all kinds of stuff um, like space-themed warlock spells and... Um, um, what's it? The uh, I'm not very familiar with fifth edition myself, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the <laughs> cr gay crime lord punk uh warlock patron was uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, that was in there for pride. Nice. <laughs> uh, that sounds more uh Shadowrun than 5e at some points, but. That is awesome. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <yep. laughs> now, where do you normally play? Uh, do your streaming? Is there? Do you have your own channel set up? How does that work? Uh, I don't have a stream. I don't have a channel. No. Um, I I'm new to this. Okay. This this thing here. What do you play? Uh, local? Is do you play uh, more yeah, local? I play locally. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. the game I play with my my friends locally here is my own game because obviously I'm not building enough different things so I have to be working on a game as well yeah uh, and that's called Expedia and it's awesome you should obviously buy it but you can't because it's not for sale yet but uh if you were able to it would be brilliant for you yeah <laughs> can, can you give us a little a taste of what that's like a little synopsis yeah uh, let's see if I can do the voice I'm a bit gravelly because I was at a convention yesterday actually running it um for a group so I've lost my voice a bit, but see if I can. <laughs> yeah. It's a time of war. It's a time of soldiers. No, I can't do that. Um, <laughs> that was good. good. I was in. I know. Okay, right. Okay. Um, mm. An infinite dimensional empire. Now that's going, you will pirate now. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can see how that would be hard to do all day. Yeah. <laughs> That would wreck anybody's voice. Yeah, mm -hmm. for real. So there's this interdimensional empire. Uh, interdimensional uh, empire. Great MacGuffin, <laughs> sorry. sorry. There's this great MacGuffin. It's called the Hall of Mirrors, and it's brilliant. It connects all the uh, parallel universes together. It's a bit like Stargate. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huge fan of parallel universes. 
Oh, okay, well, that's good. You'll love this then. Yeah. So, um, so they, uh, the Hall of Mirrors is, uh, funnily enough, the Hall of Mirrors. <laughs> Wait, I gotta pause you real quick before I forget. MacGuffin. What the hell's a MacGuffin? You use that term. A MacGuffin is kind of like an artifact, something that you put in. It has like a purpose, but uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's kind of like okay. a thing that is just there to serve a purpose. Okay, that works. Um, so the Hall of Mirrors. Yeah. Um, Hall of Mirrors. Yes. So basically, every each of these mirrors, you step through and you go into a, an identical Hall of Mirrors, but you're in a different world. Mm -hmm. uh, and this this hall is so long that they've actually sent uh, expeditions, and people either come back weeks later, or they come back mad, or they don't come back at all. No one's ever found the end of this Hall of Mirrors. It just goes on forever, as far as they can tell. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, you step through the mirrors, and you're in a different world, and you can keep doing that. You go through the mirrors, different world, different world, different world. And the, the these worlds vary. They might be low magic. They might be high magic. Uh, the tech level might be primitive all the way up to steampunk. Um, you might have the world yesterday had nothing, an animal that lived there that was bigger than a bee. And in other worlds, you have 50 foot tall, tall trees that are kind of stomping around and eating other trees or wow. eating people. Uh, and in one world, it's run by intelligent insects. Uh, so it's just, the worlds are just endless. Obviously, you can do what you like. But the, the Empire controls, or works with, rather, sorry, about 10,000 of these realms. And the premise is the player characters are troubleshooters in the army of the Empire. And they get sent into places where there's something going wrong, something's up. Uh, they get sent in to fix it. That's cool. I really so, want to play this now. Yeah. Awesome. Because like okay. you, you've described a game in which it's like as as a sci-fi nerd, that is like my mm -hmm. my love right there. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you said Stargate, I was hooked. And your explanation <laughs> makes me like, yeah, so um where do I where here's my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does anyone remember sliders? Yes. Yeah. I, am I love that show. With sliders, I own all the episodes. Wow. And it's just so cool when they go from universe to universe, and everything's completely different, um, in some way, shape, or form. You know what happened for those who are really young and have no idea what I'm talking about? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm much older than this hat. Um, so, <laughs> um, you know, it'll be like, well, what happens if maybe Obama wasn't born? You know, this is what the world would be like, or if atomic bombs did not happen at the time, you know, where would the world be? Or if dinosaurs didn't go extinct, you know, right. uh, I love all of that creativity that goes into it. And you can really create so many possibilities. And if you're doing a campaign, you can really go on for a long time because there's all kinds of things that can happen. So I really do enjoy that aspect of it. Nice. They're yeah. making that show now. <laughs> I know, 2022. <laughs> it's, really? Hey. It's not going to be sci-fi, though. It's actually going to be Amazon who bought the rights. Like, That's good great. for you, Amazon. Yeah. Amazon's buying the whole world. <laughs> True. They've got me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So now, so now in this world, um, if you're doing an ongoing campaign, if you have friends, you're playing local. Do you? How do you bring it back to that Hall of Mirrors? Do you constantly come back to go to another world? How does that happen? Yeah. So um, the way I've been doing it for quite some time is is basically ep episodic, episodic. Ep yeah. Ep yeah. Episodic. Uh, yeah. So they get given a mission. Uh, they use the Hall of Mirrors to get to the world they need to go to. They go sort things out, or or not, as the case may be. And then afterwards, they'll go home, report in, have some downtime, and then go off on another mission. Oh, so literally like Stargate. Yeah, you're going back to the home yeah. base. Okay. Yeah. So we, we played a bit before the Empire and Soldiers aspect came in. We we played it for a while where um, the PCs were uh, literally just adventurers, and they were just stepping through random mirrors and going to different worlds and going, hey, what's going on in this world? Um, that didn't really work as well. It, it didn't really make as much sense um so the soldiers thing and the empire thing kind of <clears throat> evolved and uh fit a lot better that kind of group from there nice fantastic so about how long have you been doing this campaign how many years <laughs> eight years nice wow 
That is yeah. awesome. Is yeah. it the same players? Um, I've mixed it up a bit, but yeah, some some of the guys that I started with are still still valiantly uh, uh, playtesting for me. Nice. So, I, I really, 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 really need to draw a line under it and say, do you know what? This version, yeah, this, I'm going to stop now and just, you know, this is the version. Um, but I'm getting there, I promise. I, I've been saying, <laughs> saying that for a while, but I promise because, uh, so I say I've been working on it for eight years. Um, I'm on about version 10, but I think two years ago I was on version three. So it's really accelerating. Right. Yeah. Do you have a plan for this? Are you are you going to do like a Kickstarter thing and actually try to sell this, or what are your thoughts? You should. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. That is, <laughs> what, what the heck are you waiting for? <laughs> Thank you. I'm hoping to do a Kickstarter probably next year. Good. Mm. All right. You've heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to hold them to it. So by next year, uh, we're going to come after you if we don't see you do it. Okay. Well, I made the promise now, so I better do it. That's right. <laughs> Now, you said you went to a convention. Which one was this? Uh, this is called the Owlbear and the Wizard Staff. Ooh. <laughs> I love that name. Yes. Yeah, it sounds perfect for us. It's good. It? Um, you might have seen uh, hashtag OBWS or OBAWS mm -hmm. yeah. on Twitter over the weekend. Um, don't know if you know Asaka So um, on Twitter. No. Mm -mm. No. Anyway, he organized it. He's brilliant. And it was a lovely event. Uh, s simple thing. Uh, one morning game, one afternoon game, two games. Uh, brilliant day. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. What kind of location was it? So that's in uh, Warwick, which is about an hour from here. It's a lovely, lovely city. And you do play like it's it's somebody's house or in a, in a little oh, conference see, room. Uh, funnily enough, we we borrowed um, a uh, a venue where bands go to practice. Oh, nice. It's, it's a band practice place there's probably a better name for that but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean in the, in the u.s that's all they call them here too it's just a place where bands practice yeah so. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's a good name it's a good name it's very descriptive yeah <laughs> <laughs> like no one thought of a better name yet well what do we call this uh the place where bands go to practice okay that's what yeah. we're calling it now <laughs> yeah hashtag band practice place <laughs> <laughs> so how about your your local game so how do you play that is that at somebody's house is that a, at a game place yeah, so you... um actually one of the games i was playing at work so on a monday afternoon we used to a few of us finish early mm -hmm. and then slope off and try and steal a meeting room and, mm. um, we've recently left work and, and do it at one of my friend's houses but that was that was quite good for a while only problem is every now and then someone would poke their head and go the thing's broken. The thing's broken. <laughs> yeah. uh, trying to do a game. Can't you see we're rolling dice here? Nice. <laughs> I yeah, love we, it. We, we played in the office for about a year, but now we've now we've escaped. Um, and yeah, my with my other group uh, that I've been playing with for years is either my house or their house, mm -hmm. depending you know, your place or mine. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, and I really enjoy like meeting with people to play RPGs. Oh, I even yeah. like that better than doing it online. It's Heck just yeah. a whole different feeling. Yeah. To it. You know, hanging out with your friends and drinking, everybody gets their snacks together, you know, and you get to laugh in person, you know. As yep. opposed to like online, I feel like it kind of takes that away. Even though you're with a group and you're you're partying together in a way, it's just not the same for me. Oh no. And, and if you're like me and you play horror games, you don't get the same feeling of abject horror. No. And <laughs> online as you do with your friends like i just wrote a nat one playing call of cthulhu <laughs> and they reach into their bag and take out a new character sheet <laughs> and i also think it's because you you lose all of those mannerisms and stuff too you really uh -huh. feed off of each other when you're yeah. with each other in person yeah, yeah yeah totally so like david when you do the empire steel podcast and everybody's in person like how do you feel about that oh absolutely no i love it mm -hmm. and we couldn't we couldn't do it any other way um yeah, just this meeting, you know, in the morning, we get together around the dining room table and uh, we just do it for the hour, hour and a half, knowing that we're playing the game for the audio content. So for the podcast listener, that's our focus. So our every episode, every time we play, it's it's kind of an episode. So we know that 
it just it just makes that whole dynamic better. And and continuing on that, it's funny. Two points for TK and uh, CA. I agree. Like, because if I get to play in the same room as CA, I, I have a hope that maybe I can actually touch her and like. <laughs> yeah. like now this is so impersonal i don't like it um and tk with the horror ones i'm thinking for me i am a little i don't want to curse too much but i'm a little <laughs> punk when it comes to heart like i can't even play video games in my room with the lights off like nah you know they freaking what was that one uh, years ago man i couldn't even i had to stop playing What's that? Resident Evil. I was playing Resident Evil like yeah. when it wasn't even that good. And I was like, ah, you know, these things slurping down and getting you with their tongue and stuff. I'm like, no. But so playing like playing a, a horror game online in person with people would be a little easier because we're together, you know, and there's no monster coming out. But I'm here like in my studio or something by myself in the dark playing online horror. Oh, forget it. I can't do it. Nope. Not happen. <laughs> That's it. That's my point. so i a crazy question um totally off topic since you're from uh the great britain what are your thoughts on brexit and is that ever worked itself out i I, because i i hear things once in a while any thoughts on that Uh, seriously you don't want to get me started on that yeah, no, I do. I, I think just you know oh, something yeah. short, not not crazy political conversation, but just it yeah. it interests me. And so you're there, you know, dealing with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it's a giant mess. Uh, I don't think anyone really knows what's going on. Yeah. And speaking personally, I don't think that the people that are behind it um, have necessarily the best interests of everyone at heart. And let me back up. So for people that don't know, just uh, I'll tell you what I know of it from my stupid over here in the U.S., what I hear and what I've seen. So um, you have the EU, right? So basically all these countries are in the EU. And I, I know it's like it's easier to travel as far as passports and stuff. It's kind of free travel. The money's kind of all together. Like, so it's easier to spend money and that stuff. Um, and then they wanted to stop that. So, you know, with that little explanation, you want to add on to that? Mm-hmm. So there's uh, a bunch of countries across Europe in the European Union, uh, including the UK. And as you say, there, um, there are trade agreements, travel agreements. Uh, there's all sorts of things in place so we can move around freely, kind of work mm-hmm. in different countries, um, trade with one another. And yeah, it's, it's all been set up. And then basically it all kicked off. It looks like uh, some politician oddly enough, was trying to get ahead. Um, They were trying to pull the rug out of uh, another uh, political party, and they pulled some maneuvers and some stunts, which set off a series of events that they didn't anticipate or want. Um, Ended up kicking off this kind of storm of stuff. Um, And they're just, yeah, it's it's getting really close. I don't think anyone understands the economic... um, outcomes what's going to happen because of it i think some of the people that are backing it are probably going to be um what's the word uh financially um benefiting from it if it goes ahead yeah i I suspect Mm -hmm. some of the people like uh, the people in power kind of ulterior motives right just for their own pockets they're not doing it for the people they say they're doing it for the people but they're not they're doing it um and it just really worries me personally because i don't think anyone knows what is going to happen afterwards no yeah. one knows it's, it's too complicated and too many moving parts and we've got all these trade agreements with europe how are they going to work out um and especially because uh we seem to be barreling into a hard brexit which basically means there's not going to be a deal which means we're not going to replace these hundreds of agreements that are in place or whatever with other agreements it's just going to be like yeah, Bad, cut, no, done, more. right. Um, kind of finishing the relationship without having kind of a new legal relationship in place in advance. Mm. Uh, right. So, yeah. It's, so, uh, yeah, politics sucks. It's scary. Yeah. It's scary. I think it's going to affect jobs here, potentially medicine, sure. food, uh, fuel, all sorts. 
Yeah, crazy, crazy. So obviously, from what you're saying, I mean, you, you're for um, the the EU staying in um, and not Brexit. Mm. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, definitely. Man, bummer. A- any any timeline for that when you're looking at maybe cutting it off? Uh, I think it's next the next month. Oh, it's getting very oh. close now. It's next month. Dude. Wow. Ow. Yeah. I feel for you. Sorry. I th- I think um, I saw a tweet on twitter funnily enough that really summed it up it was like uh the uk saying we want a unicorn <laughs> and the eu saying um but there's no there's no such thing as unicorns you can't have unicorns yeah and the uk going okay well we want a pony <laughs> you can't have a pony and they say well okay nothing then you can have nothing and then the uk say well we vote against your nothing we we don't accept your nothing like where's this going wow <laughs> wow yeah it's a sad state of affairs i'm sorry I, it's just interesting to me you know coming from our different our garbage going on over here too you know it's yeah. just uh people from all over the world have their own crap they got to deal with and uh it, it the bottom line i think like you you already mentioned it you you made uh you touched on it it's basically you know some people that that don't care about the people just you know trying to fatten their own pockets and and make themselves more powerful, and it's a shame. It's sad. It is. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's bad because they gave all kinds of arguments. So we had a referendum two years ago, something like that, um, and uh, the UK got to vote for or against. Um, but the stuff that was promised, the way that, when people saying this is why you should do it, the stuff that they promised, a lot of it was uh, made up or lies. I'm not saying it all was. Um, but some of the things people, when they voted for it, they were expecting a certain outcome, mm-hmm. yeah, which was never going to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's the crazy thing too with the politics. It's just so much crap. They always they'll, they'll have a little truth or something they'll throw in there, and then they'll have all this other crap behind it that twists it, and and you get this other stuff involved that that you weren't expecting. Yeah, bummer. Our last fundraiser we did for Flint, there was that referendum that uh, Michigan passed to get Flint clean water. Except the, uh, there was a lot of other things they added to that. So all yeah. the money that Michigan mm-hmm. got from the government to give them clean water, like 10 cents of every dollar went to Flint. Like, Yeah, that's a mess. But... Yeah, I mean, how long has that been going on for? It's been a couple of years already, right? I mean, what the heck? Yeah, it's over five years, I believe. Yeah, yeah right? 2002 or 2012, yeah. so seven years. Madness. Mm-hmm. Madness. All right, to uh, to steer off of the depressing uh, politics issue, <laughs> yeah. but I have to take it because it, it interests me. You know, I like to you know find out while we have somebody that that is knowledgeable in that. So, uh, apologies. Well, you got me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know why hunger? Why is that your cause? That's an interesting one. Um... And if it's too personal, you don't have to say anything. No, no, it's okay. It's it's one of those things. It's you know, um, it. No one said to me, you know, um, what charity, you know, what kind of cause you have. It just kind of came to me, mm-hmm. and I thought about it since, um, and I think it's because when I was very, very small, when I was very, very young, um, my mother and I were very slightly homeless. Mm-hmm. I don't want to big, big that up. I don't want to exaggerate it. That's okay. Uh, mm-hmm. But we were homeless for a bit and actually we were fine we were fine we were looked after um and um there wasn't a lot of money and there wasn't a lot of food but we were fine i i really enjoyed it uh, mm-hmm. i was talking to my mum the other day and we drove past uh the place where we stayed when we were homeless and uh i used to call it the summer house because mm. we were there over a summer mm-hmm. and, uh, the following year i wanted to go back i, I said can we go back there <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I was hardly hard done by, but I think that kind of just put something in my head Mm -hmm. and, um, I guess I can explain this with a story. So, um, I, I went, I thought you were going to say a song. I thought you were going to just start. (laughs) 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 Good. Normally I'm pretty bad, but that was just, So, uh, yeah, I'll tell you a story, uh, and I'll try not to cry. So, um, I 
like going to these uh, hippie business events. They're kind of like businessy, startup y, entrepreneurial, but also kind of social good. Mm-hmm. Bind them together. And I was at this event a couple of years ago, and there's this um, exercise you do with Lego. It's, it's called Lego Free Play or something like that. Okay. And you basically get 23 specific Lego bricks, and they take you through a series of exercises. And they ask questions of you, and you kind of use the Lego to answer it. And um, one of the questions is, why are you doing what you do? And uh, so I thought about it. Some of these questions are quite hard, and you think, how do I answer this with Lego? Um, mm-hmm. I think that's part of the beauty of it. It kind of taps in. Anyway, I I ended up, uh, I made a gravestone. And uh, when my the people on my table asked me, you know, how does that represent why are you doing what you're doing? Uh, it's like, I just feel for it. I just, I hate the idea that we live in a world where some of us, um, we have so much, we're so comfortable. I mean, there are bazillionaires um, and generally a lot of folks, I mean, your worry is, you know, um, I don't know, shall I get the new stereo or something? Uh, yeah. Like, where do I put all my role-playing books? Uh, things like that. And then there's other people and they don't know how they're going to, get their next meal uh they don't know how yeah. to feed their kids mm-hmm. uh, and yeah that was and i just was crying in front of all these people um because i had this thing but yeah i think that pulled out something deep down inside from me that has always been there yeah and, awesome uh, yeah and I feel like that's how a lot of these organizations, organizations <laughs> my God, words, uh, get started. It's from something that's happened in your life or something you've experienced or seen, you know. Um, I know, like, for me, um, for what we're doing, I want to help multiple people. And when becoming a nonprofit, they want you to really focus on just one thing, which is not something that I really want to do because there's so many people who are going through so many different things. I want to be able to help and reach out to different places around the world. And Mm. um, it's just, you know, I've been through a lot of crap in my life, you know, and I want to do everything possible to help as many people as I can before I die. That's really how it goes. So, you know, um, I really, you know, appreciate you being open and, and letting us know like where it comes from because, you know, a lot of people, don't I think a lot of people are interested to know that side you know what's going on why do people want to become nonprofits? and it's just it's really amazing that you're really trying to strive to get to that point to make a difference in the world it's really amazing yeah and tears and crying helps uh, rate ratings so we're gonna auction it off or yeah. I would have totes cried <laughs> <laughs> For a fifty dollar donation, uh, we will tell the story again and <laughs> work at the tier. <laughs> more. So, uh, get it, Tika. Uh, so that, that'll be the next item on my uh, stat out: this RPG creators tears. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to take it way back. Uh, tell me about how you got into RPGs. You know, like were you a little kid? Like what? What started it? What gave you that hunger for getting into the, <laughs> that world? But, but... I, uh, I remember this quite well. So uh, I was about 13, and I, uh, I used to spend quite a bit of time in the library at school, uh, obviously because I was a jock. No, wait, uh, because I was a <laughs> And uh, there was these kids in there, and they were playing this game, and they were sat around, and they had this books and dice. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. I'd, I'd always loved board games, so I was very interested in what they were doing. And they told me they were playing this game called Dungeons & Dragons, but I couldn't play. Um, I was like, oh, come on, let me play. And they're like, no, no, you can't play. But, <laughs> no, no. You know, if you do this job for us, uh, you know, go carry this thing over there or do this thing or maybe do some homework. I don't really remember mm-hmm. doing homework, but I remember doing jobs. Anyway, I was running errands for them. Mm-hmm. And they kept giving me these errands and just saying, oh, yeah, do this and we'll let you play, do this and we'll let you play. And um, they, they kept this up for a while. I was like, no, I want to play, let me play. <laughs> uh, this, this, the silly thing is they were actually giving me XP Mm-hmm. As I was running the errands, they'll give me XP. So when I eventually joined the group, when they eventually said, "All right, you know, you've been doing this for weeks or whatever it was, we'll let you join in," I was like, I had the highest level character because I'd earned more XP than they had uh, <laughs> running errands. Uh, so yeah, I started playing D and D. It was kind of 
first, first slash second edition. I mm. think we had first edition DMG and a second edition PHB, PHB, because um, uh, that had just come out. And uh, yeah, I kind of instantly fell in love with it. Um, I like the. I like all the aspects. I like I love rolling dice. I love the randomness um, aspect. I love the role playing and making up stories and the crazy escapades and the stunts you pull and it, it just kind of sucked me in. And then um, that was it basically. I just role played and role played. Um, I had quite a few friends locally who did it and we did quite a lot of free form as well. And we'd just be like, oh, what should we do this afternoon? I don't know. Um, Let's get uh, let's role play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something. This was yeah. before we had the system. It's like let's get a Saturday morning kids cartoon, um, and then we just <laughs> role play it. Yes, uh, that was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I was going to say something else then, but it, well, it, you just brought a tear to my eye. Uh, Saturday morning cartoons, they aren't on anymore. You know, it's just yeah, it doesn't you get the yeah. Cartoon Networks, but yeah, we were spoiled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So, um, uh, so I don't know. You all have an equivalent. So we do some um, exams when we're about sixteen, and another set of exams when we're eighteen. Mm-hmm. So yep. they're called GCSEs and A levels. So my parents said, when I was um, in my late teens, they said I basically I had a GCSE in D and D, and A level in Shadowrun because <laughs> that was basically what I was doing. Um, they what they didn't know is I then went on to get a degree in Magic the Gathering. So. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. And I want to ask you more about the RPGs that you play, right? Because you just mentioned a couple there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I want to back up because you said you loved board games. You know, and that's so when you saw them playing, you already had an interest. So, what kind of board games were you playing? What do you like? Uh, so, my favorites at the moment are Dominion and the. Pathfinder adventure card game. Oh. Love that game. That's brilliant. Don't know that uh, one. Also getting into sorry? I don't know that one. Oh, okay, you you have to try it. It's brilliant. It's um it's a bit like a <clears throat> excuse me, deep voice, manly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like an RPG light. So it's got aspects of uh, RPGs from Pathfinder in it. But it's a brilliant game. It's just so well balanced. Uh, it's good fun for a group of people. Um basically you have a scenario you have some locations and you explore and you have to defeat monsters but the mechanic is to be fair it's a little bit odd but once you get your head around it the fact that uh you go to the bar and you encounter a longsword and you have to make a melee check and if you succeed you claim the longsword if you fail it goes away it's it's, it's odd it's like no it's longsword i pick it up i do not have to fight the longsword <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, you have to, if you do, like use your armor, you then discard it. It's like, oh, I've used my plate mail. Oh, it fell off. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes a little bit of getting your head around it. But yeah. it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So much fun. That nice. reminds that, uh, me uh, every month. That reminds me of the old Hero Quest game. Where you would get items that were pretty much single use. Like, you're being attacked. I'm going to use my armor to deflect the attack. Okay, your armor's broken now. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's very much like that, yeah. And it's card card based? It's card based, yeah. yeah. Um it's brilliant. You have different cards, you have like monster cards, weapon cards, armor cards, spell cards, and you build a deck um out of a variety of these cards and then you can as you play you acquire better cards and you can upgrade your deck. So over time your deck gets bigger and has better cards in it. Okay. Um it's really nice. I've been playing this uh Alchemist. And he's brilliant. It's, it's broken, which which helps. Nice. <laughs> you have lots of potions in the game, which are one-shot items that actually, uh, when you use it, it, goes back to the box. It's no longer even in your deck. It's gone. Wow. Except alchemists don't do that. They just put it at the bottom of their deck. Oh. So you've got these really nice potions, which have powerful effects because they're one-shot. Mm-hmm. You keep using them. And you just keep using them. All right. So, so it's broken, that. yeah. That's and what's it. the name of the game again? It's the uh, Pathfinder Adventure card game available in uh, your local friendly game store. TK's looking it up. Yeah, yeah they were asking about it in chat. I was going to grab a mm-hmm. link. Uh, there you go. To nice. Like the official one from, uh, I'm guessing Paizo. Yep, Paizo. 
Oh, they make it? Yeah, I was like, I'm oh, not cool. sure if Paizo makes it or if they outsource, because I know uh, yeah. they were working on expanding their own product line. Cool. So Dominion, what else? Any other ones come to mind? Uh, recently been getting into the Century Road games. Um, they've got uh, uh, two or three games out, and they're fairly similar to other games. But what they've done, I think, is they've got some ideas from other games, really kind of uh, polished them, presented them really well, made the rules super simple. I, I like games where basically on your turn you can do X or Y, and that's it. That's your mm -hmm. only decision. You can do X or Y. And you think, well, that's straightforward. I've got two choices. But actually, the depth of it that comes out of that can be quite large. Mm. You know, um, I was term. I forget the term. But anyway, yeah, yeah, simple options, but actually, lots of complexity that comes out of that. Nice. Hmm. So I just... uh, in Go a previous ahead. life, I actually made my own card game. No, <laughs> yeah. Before I before I was RPG Kitchen, I was Angels Inferno. And I made a card game called Convoluted. <laughs> and uh, I sold a few copies of it before uh, I realized quite how much hard work it was constantly to uh, sure. sell a board game. Wow. Um, that was good fun. It was a good experience. Hmm. Maybe another Kickstarter. Yeah. That's how it's done. <laughs> So just like to take a minute just to thank everybody for making donations during this stream. What? Uh, what do we got? <laughs> what do we got? <laughs> we really do appreciate it so very, very much. And in fact, we're going to do a giveaway too. We can continue the podcast for sure. Um, this is from RPG Kitchen Store. They're going to give out an RPG Kitchen t-shirt, which just came out not too long ago. Oh, show it off. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Is that a cube? Nice. It is. Is that a gelatinous nice. cube? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm showing off any better. <laughs> now, do all, do all the shirts wriggle, like, when you get them? They do. They do. <laughs> wiggle, oh, okay. wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so how many, do you, do you, how many uh, donations do we get? Do you know? Uh, two so far. Nice. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And how are we going to do the giveaway? Are you going to do that in the chat? Yeah, yeah. We can continue on. I was just letting everybody know. I love it, though. It's all right to stop shirt. for that. I wanted to say thanks to uh, Luke, uh, Chet, to Chet, um, for yesterday because uh, we had trouble getting the, the stream up and uh, ended up having uh, – I couldn't get over to the Thread Raider stream and – uh, had to put it up on Steel Empire, and then he had the genius idea because we didn't want to wait too long. So we're like, "Well, let's just start playing," and it was um, uh, New Wild uh, uh, Bob's game, and uh, and then Chad was like, "Hey, well, I'll just you know, uh, what do you call that when you play somebody else's stream? Uh, host, host, yeah, host." So yeah, he was able to get in and make it host my channel. I was like, "Oh, fantastic!" So. Of chat. Oh yeah, oh, he made that. Fancy work. This is the post filled with coffee. Chet that's made that. That's right. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So just a shout now, out to him. Yeah. It is now almost empty. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> that is awesome. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing creator. Yeah, smart guy. Yeah, we're good. Good addition to the Thread Raider family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Awesome. <laughs> um, and what else is going on? Uh, Anything about this, uh, this things that are going on this weekend that we want? Anything uh, particular happen, crazy that I missed? I know we're not able. Yeah, to, uh, you convention. guys, you guys have stayed up constantly uh, the whole weekend, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I don't know when I slept. <laughs> I passed out a few times. Yeah. And then Munich woke up. <laughs> uh, I've just been eating crackers to keep me going. <laughs> Nice. But it's been really good. We've had a great time. A lot of uh, Dungeons and Dragons games out there. Smash Brothers was this morning, which was amazing. Yeah. Because Obi Sean, who's in uh, chat right now, he can do all of these crazy voices. He's a voice actor. Yeah. And so um, I was able to donate. Not gonna lie. <laughs> it was me. Uh, donate to change the voices. So that was really, really cool. <laughs> I just think that's my favorite thing. Yeah. Um, I love when they get creative like that. That's awesome. And after this, uh, TK is doing the wing challenge. Yes. I have, uh, after, because they don't take too long to cook, they've been soaking for two days in various hot sauces. Uh. One of them is a uh, hot sauce that uh, 
to keep us on a PG kind of rating, we'll say it's death sauce. It is five of the hottest peppers in the world mixed with chocolate and uh, as a base. It's a super thick sauce. Pours like motor oil. Oh. It's in a jar about that big with a cork in it. Oh, I, had, I, if, uh, I would not sue if I died. Uh. I had the wings actually from the guy who makes them, and it was a religious experience. So if, if, during the hot wing challenge, if someone wants to see me have a religious experience on stream, don't need a hundred bucks. I will. I will chomp one of those down. See, oh. like I at first when we put it out online, we were like, oh, we're gonna do the swing challenge. And we're like, ah in the background and then nobody responded and i was like oh man i'm gonna have to eat wings uh. <laughs> oh, no. like, i don't know if i could do that because i just i'm not a hot sauce person i can do spicy but i can't do hot sauce yeah. so i'm really glad that i didn't have to do it and somebody else volunteered like who do you have with the team uh, how many people yeah yeah uh, we have uh death by mage sarge and uh from geeky bugbear nick nice he picked up some hot sauce. Was like, I've had one of them. The other one, when Green showed it to me, was like, I'm going to order that because, <laughs> like, looking at the ingredients of it, it's like, that looks like could make a great base for you know, some chili, just a little bit in the pot of chili. Let it cook overnight. Nice. <laughs> uh, how about back to uh, over, over the pond? Um, pizza is a worldwide, and you guys be quiet. <laughs> Pizza is a worldwide yes. thing. Um, mm -hmm. the so food of our people. <laughs> all right, time. you two, you two, hush, hush. I have a question Sorry, for him. I'm excited. Uh, so, do you, do you like pizza? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah, what, pizza. What's, your go pizza? what's your go-to pizza? What's your go-to pizza if like you had pizza. a pizza? What's your go-to? What would you get? Plain. Add some toppings. Uh, my go-to, uh, my favorite has to be probably the meat feast. <laughs> Yes. The what? A meat, meat feast. feast. Fantastic. Meat feast. All the all meats. The meats. Yeah. Uh, including I like a description of all the meats. And barbecue sauce. Ooh. Yeah, CA loves meat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've made it very clear on several episodes. Yes. Uh, so now, on it? you must agree to this, though. This is the big question. So it's like sacrilegious to put <laughs> a vegetable or a fruit on pizza, like like pineapple. <laughs> On a nice hot pizza, and you put cold, delicious pineapple. No, but doesn't belong no, on the pizza. Help me out. No, you're leading him in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it has to be fair. If we were to put pineapple on a pizza, how would you feel? Uh, now. I, no. I <gasps> no. Oh, I it's so bad. Chad, help me out. Yes. Oh, if someone gives me like oh, a no, meaty no. pizza. And then accidentally drop some pineapple on it. <laughs> I, I would eat it. You wouldn't hate them, yeah. I wouldn't hate it, but if someone right. gave me a ham and pineapple pizza, like a Hawaiian, I'd be thinking, okay, well, there's there's there's, there's an opportunity lost here. Yes. I have the opportunity to have a great no. pizza, and instead we've got uh, ham and pineapple. It hurts my soul. I love you. We've got ham and pineapple, and bacon and chicken, and chorizo and pepperoni, and then some mm. more meat. Sure. Yes. Uh, ham and pineapple. Obviously, vegetarian options are available. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah broccoli is really good. Yeah. No, good answer. Good answer. Yeah. That, that you One can of stay. The highlights of the fundraiser was that um, we donated for Maddie to eat pineapple pizza. Yeah. He's anti pineapple pizza. And I can't yes. believe it was fifty dollars to eat a slice, and we got it. I was like, yeah. Oh. I, <laughs> I didn't have to be live. Oh, so good. I I'm so the good. mid ground of the thread raiders because mm -hmm. for me it's it's pizza. I'm gonna eat it no matter what. Yeah. Unless it's like, candy corn pizza. Okay. Yeah, that, that is just disgusting. But then, oh. of yeah. course, I also am trying to perfect ever. banana pizza, too, for CA. Okay. So I was against banana pizza trying it first, just like you were about pineapple. And then somebody posted online and said, oh, well, I think it was like Italy. In Italy, we put bananas on our pizza all the time. And I was like, well, I got to try. So I called the guy up and I was like, hey, make me banana pizza. He's like, what? Like, what do you want me to do? So I had to take my banana over so they, could, <laughs> they could cook it for me. And then I ate it live on stream. And this is the Thread Raider challenge um, is what we do. And so, like, people send me, like, really weird stuff. And then I eat it live. Um, nice. You know, 
very odd. Uh, but it was actually not so bad. I felt like if it had been cold, honestly, it would have went better with the pizza than had it been cooked like they did for me then and had a weird taste. Or if it was a banana drizzle, even that would go. But mm. I really thought it was odd, but it actually wasn't that bad. So right. There's some weird stuff out there, but I would try it. <laughs> Another food question uh, for Over the Pond. So the three of us are uh, from the same northeast uh, area, northeast U.S., uh, Philadelphia area, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a food in our area that that is a big deal, sure. uh, a cheesesteak. Um, do you know what a cheesesteak is? No. Yeah. Oh, so uh, I, I really I know because I was in Texas, all right, which is pretty far from where we're at. Mm-hmm. Uh, my daughter graduated uh, Air Force uh, basic training, so we went down there to see her, and I'm um, in my hotel room. I said we got a pizza and. I said, yeah, give me a cheesesteak. And they're like, a what? I'm like, what? a cheesesteak? You know what a cheesesteak is? Oh, so you want a hoagie I mean, or a sub? I'm like, no, 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 no. Steak with cheese? Like, I had to explain. Like, you know, you, it's like a hoagie roll or, or a sub roll. It's like a sandwich. And then you put, you know, steak. You cook steak, chopped steak. Mm-hmm. And then you have cheese, like, you know, any kind of cheese. You put American cheese, whatever you want, drizzle, cheese whiz. That's a cheesesteak. And a lot of people have fried onions, but. Um, anyway, so do uh, you have anything like that over there? Anything weird we don't have? Yeah, to be fair, we would just call that a steak sandwich. Steak sandwich, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Philly's known for cheesesteaks. It's like the cheesesteak capital of the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just funny that, uh, yeah, just like last month, there was an issue with me. I'm like, a cheesesteak, damn it. Yeah. No, <laughs> even like in New York, I remember going and for college, and they didn't have Scrapple, and nobody had any idea what I was talking about. It was no. Like, nowhere uh so it's really interesting even though it's super close to us it's completely there's just things they just have never heard before yeah, or, yeah. Your thing when you mentioned scrapple uh friend of mine pennsylvania of yeah has no idea what scrapple is yeah, yeah. because they just don't have it but a friend mm-hmm. of mine in washington state washington state has scrapple oh yeah. wow they're 2800 miles away yeah. and they have scrapple <laughs> i would have never guessed oh, no. now have you had bubble and squeak no i haven't tell me more that uh, so it, it came about from uh, cooking leftovers from Sunday lunch. So basically, it's uh, you got your potato and maybe uh, uh, broccoli, spinach, kind of your green veg, yeah. um, and you've got leftovers from the Sunday lunch. Then you fry it up the next day, and that's called bubble and squeak. Wow! Wow, that's cool. Nice. What I've been drinking a lot of lately is bubble tea. That's a very odd thing, but I love bubble tea. It's really That's... good. And they have all these different flavors now. Japanese Before, thing, like right? One. Isn't it? Uh, so I get it from the Chinese food restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I know a lot of the uh, the ramen places have them. Mm-hmm. You know? And they yeah. also have milk tea now. And there's a food truck right outside. <laughs> right outside my uh, work now that has it. And that's really cool, too. Um, and Super so sweet, right? Bubbles are. The milk tea is, yes, yeah. very, very sweet. Yeah. Um, definitely more like a dessert. Um, I felt like with the different teas, like taro tea is not so bad. Um, they also have iced teas now that you can do. Um, you have to be careful, though, where you go, because if you say bubble tea, sometimes they have the actual bubbles, which is made from tapioca balls. Yep. Or they have these, they're called jellies, and I do not like the jellies. It's, it's this really weird consistency to it. Mm. It's almost like jello in a candy form that's chewy <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> so you have to be careful where you go but a true bubble tea has tapioca balls in it it's really cool and they give you this really big straw for it and so much fun so much i don't like them uh, you didn't try you don't know I, i've tried them no i've had them yeah you better <laughs> i'll get one now and you'll drink it live <laughs> yeah. that's one of those things of even when I was doing martial arts when I was a kid, my sensei's little sister loved those things. And there was be like, I just prefer a nice hot cup of tea. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. If it's, if it's iced tea, it needs to be southern. If it's tea, tea, it needs to be hot. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of tea, so uh, is this is it a stereotype or do all Englishmen have to drink tea? Uh, they don't have to. Is there a pinky uh, involved too? I think, they, I think they should have to. <laughs> yeah, most do though, right? Is it is that like a thing that you're brought up with? Like, it's cultural, like kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's a lot of tea. There's, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of coffee around these days, and I don't, I don't really approve of the spread of coffee. Right. I feel not, like not everyone... suitably British. 
I don't find so. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's actually a thing, right? It's not just TV shows. Like, it's it's, it's a not... real thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Everyone I've yeah. ever that's, dated that's from England drinks tea. Ca, you know, you know, I told you I don't want to talk about your dating life. It upsets me. <laughs> it upsets me. And I, I got this cup especially for you. I don't know if you could read that. Oh. It's, it's backwards, but I was thinking of you this morning when I grabbed Ooh. my tea. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I want to beat up all your ex-boyfriends. <laughs> as a as a coffee lover, I love coffee. But as a huh. person who also gives a damn about the environment. Coffee is terrible for the environment. Is it? Why? Yeah. Uh, uh, the time it takes to grow coffee, you can actually grow tea in half the time, and you don't need as much giant machinery to do the processing of it. Oh, like okay. A coffee plant, like a, a single like coffee production plant, is gigantic. Huh. But they might only get two to 3,000 pounds of coffee from one harvest. But you can hmm. just, they have uh, tea processing plants that don't do, that it, have the electrical machinery, mm-hmm. but gets three times the yield for what they're doing. Okay. Wow. Weird. I was watching Nat Geo when I was working on the uh, washer last night, and that was one of the things they were talking about. What was more ecologically sound, coffee or tea? And I was like, I didn't know that. My, my beloved coffee drink is actually really that bad for me because yeah, yeah. I feel kind of bad now that I have all this coffee sitting in my kitchen. And I feel like breakfast over there is just something that's very decadent, like clotted cream and jams. And it's always, it just sounds delicious. No, that's Lord of the Rings that you're thinking of. Breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <Second breakfast. laughs> no, it's, it's true. Yeah. We have our, mm-hmm. we have our servants bring us, um, uh, <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I'm all that in my head, like, yeah, what? Uh, <laughs> now it would have been beautiful. You had a little bell, and you just went. <laughs> that would have been perfect. Oh, oh you got one? Do you really? You got a bell. <laughs> uh, we'll have to edit this out for the audio podcast. <laughs> nice. <There it is. laughs> Bring an RPG book and some clotted cream. Yes. For those uh, listening, you, you just missed the best goof ever. <laughs> so, um, so uh, we fluffed over. Um, Ca asked, uh, "Do you use the pinky? Is that a thing too when you drink your tea?" Yeah, um, you can get movies. Yes, it's, it's definitely yeah. a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's not always, but um, particularly if, if you're being thoughtful or, or if you've got the nice china out, then uh, yeah, uh, the, the pinky action. You pinky the yeah. mug. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I pink it, but for no reason. I, I don't, it just happens just naturally. Be, just to be kind of wrong, you, you can kind of hold it that way. Yeah, then, see, that's then, me. Then, My pinky always does that. Using the handle, but you're weird. Still you still pull the pinky out, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's probably because, you know, I'm part English or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm part English, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well then. I'm part Scottish. Except me too. Yes. We know that kilted t- sea lord. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think that lord? came from? Which are kilt. Huh. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. So you know what I think it's time for? I do, and I want to hear it the traditional way. It's time for what's in the box? What's in the box? In the box. And is our guest prepared for what's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> So for those who are in the audience right now and have no idea what we're talking about and why we're super excited about what's in the box, is that on the Thread Readers podcast, we do a segment where TK will read us a story that we follow along in. And at the very end of the story, there is a box. And when we open up the box, each one of us has an item inside that we will describe for TK. Um, these are items that you can use in any type of RPG game. Um, we do this on every episode, and eventually we're looking forward to doing maybe a Kickstarter with like a PDF so that you can have all of these items that you can use for your game in the future. And what? You forgot, you forgot about the, the new what? thing, CA. Okay. Uh, with the What's in the Box, we will be doing hashtags on Twitter for yes. the yes. items, and whichever one wins will go into the What's in the Box book. And mm-hmm. whoever picks that winning hashtag through the uh, tweet. tweet yeah 
One words week I'm helping. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. Yeah. <laughs> one person uh, through who picks the winning tweet will win a set of tabletop wheat dice. Yes. That's and right. Yes. Because we felt like if we were voting on each other, it was kind of biased, and like you know there were some fights going on. And like that. Yeah. So we figured you always won. You. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Not always. Yeah. What was that? I love this. What was the one for the last one we put out on Twitter? What was the because punt loaf? No, yeah. <laughs> the velvet, velvet loaf. loaf. <laughs> loaf punter though. Yeah, we the had... loaf punter. <laughs> Why do you ask me questions? You know I don't. I nope. can't believe that hashtag <laughs> is a joke I made. Got yes. more votes than the serious one. Yes. <laughs> so it was, it was a... great because you made that up on a whim. Totally, totally. You're like, you know what? Velvet loaf. Yeah. <laughs> what? And it, the, <laughs> just so everybody knows that, the, so you had this uh, familiar bird. And then right away, like, I didn't have my what's in the box ready. So I'm like, all right, all right, I'm going to make a, a cat that's going to like go after the bird. It'll be like the bane of what was his name? What was your bird's name? Do you remember My the bird's bird. name? Uh, uh, um, frugal. It was frugal. 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 So it's frugal That's familiar. Frugal. Yeah, yeah. So it was the bane of frugal. Was the cat, and uh, it was, it was his name. And it was so it was a it was a, a velvet loaf. It basically looked like, and you pushed on it, and it became a cat. And then uh, who was who was on the show? Who was by it? Sonic. Son by Spy Sonic. Yes, mm -hmm. he ended up at the. He's like I I kicked the cat into the woods. <laughs> so it's like, he's a, so it's the loaf punter. So amazing. Yeah, that worked out good. <laughs> love it, love it. That might be my favorite ever. I don't know if we can beat that. So. No, I remember when I came up with the portable plank and people oh, laughed God. for so long. It was like, we had to edit it all out. There was so much laughter and I had no idea why it was so funny because I was so serious about it. I was like, this is really a great idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, there nice. was, I remember the exact words that made it so funny though. It can go as small as six inches or as large as you want. <laughs> and then I was like, you could put it on any surface. And then Griswick's like lost his mind. And yes. It made sense. Oh, this is what you have to look forward to today. So yeah. I'm glad you all get to be a part of it. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> TK's uh, ready. I am ready. I see if I can compose myself from the uh. Florida Plank incident. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you left the house in the last What's in the Box. You've gone back through the woods and you're on your quest to reach the random castle in the distance. And as you're going through the woods, you see there's three paths to take. One path says, I'm the right way. One says, I'm the wrong way. And one says, nothing. Because there's nothing in that path except steps that go up. And at the top of the steps sits a golden, glistening safe with one of those old school dials on the front of it. Wow. Super fancy what's in the box. Mm -hmm. Is that is that in the story? Yep. Oh, okay. So I didn't this want to, like, getting, I didn't want to cut like, you off. Yeah, like, they're usually yeah. so much longer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it will continue after someone opens it. Oh. I thought this one out. <laughs> so does it look like I can break into the safe? It does. Do I have to do anything special? Do I have to roll for uh, it? I have dice. Believe me, yeah, my old uh, ass is covered a, in dice. <laughs> roll me a... Just a Nat 20 or D20, let me know what you get. Roll me a Nat 20. I yeah. love roll me yeah, a Nat 20. Uh -huh, I'll try. <laughs> Watch me lose my mind if I roll a Nat 20. You crazy. Uh, six. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you uh, try to turn the handle, you actually push the safe over, and the safe bursts open. And inside, you're all pulled into a no. giant vortex that spins round and round and round. It, you see images of <laughs> things from the past things that look like they may be from the future are there mirrors there are no mirrors oh uh, all right that's another... not the right universe <laughs> <Keep going. laughs> As the vortex continues to spin you see in the very center of the vortex a tiny dog oh and the, the dog has one of those uh barrels around its neck Oh. 
It's a tiny dog with a barrel? Yeah, like a St. Bernard. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, but he's tiny. a tiny St. Bernard. But as you get closer, the St. Bernard gets bigger. Oh. And oh. Bigger and bigger. And as you land on the soft, padded earth, the St. Bernard comes over, kind of paws at its collar, and the barrel drops off. It looks at all of you and says, I have a very important question from the king. What's in the box? What's, what's in the, the box? what's in the barrel? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> yeah. What's ah. in the barrel it's still, box? It's still a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> that works. Okay. Now are we letting our guests go first or are we gonna give them an example? No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I think David should go first. Okay. For being a loaf punter. <laughs> All right. Um, so you, I kind of like when hearing everybody else's those, I can go on the fly and change it. Yeah. But no, I'll, I'll go first. My uh, of the times have changed. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to win. Ah. Go for me. <laughs> I have a cool hashtag. Uh, <laughs> so I, I reached down and, and I guess I could just crack it open, pop the lid off, right? Yep. Okay. Pop it off. And, um, or I guess, am I doing it or is somebody else going to open it? And I'll tell you what, I forget how this works. Am I, am I getting it out? <laughs> it opens and then you describe the item. Jeez. <laughs> but I th I, don't we always, somebody else could, like TK always be like, I, I open the box, you know, and I, I put my hand in or I eat it. <laughs> it's like... I put your hand in the box. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm guiding you. So I pull out a, it looks like it's a little cauldron. Ooh. It's a little black cauldron. It's cute because it just fits inside that barrel, and it has a little it has a little little lid too, right? So it's got a little black cauldron with some little mm -hmm. tiny um, bumpy legs, and a little little lid with a little tiny uh, bumpy handle. Looks like a little nipple on there. <laughs> and I say, "Ooh, look what I found!" Oh, I'm gonna mm. take my uh, my flask off my belt and pour some liquid into the cauldron. Okay, so you pop it open. All right, so you take the lid off, and you see these fruits and vegetables just pop out, and it's full. I like oh. this cauldron. And you pour some water in it. Okay. But it's so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> so it just overflows. Yeah, whatever you can see just pops out. It just out. keeps going? Oh. No, it just stops right there, right? It goes to the lid, to the brim. It just... Num, 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 num. I drink it all. <laughs> Does it taste like strawberry? All the all the food that's in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the fruits and vegetables. It tastes like a power smoothie. Yeah. I mean, if you want to yeah. crush them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So, like, you can feed like an army. Uh, yes, yeah. You could take out whatever you want, um, and then you empty it. It's empty. You put the lid back on. Next time you take the lid off, pff, pops out again. See. It's a good idea. Constantly feeding the hungry. And it goes with the theme boom, boom, boom. of the charity event. I oh, see what yeah. you've done. Beat that. Heathen. <laughs> that was a good one. All right. You, Adam, you ready? Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, apologies if I break any rules. It's not clear that there are any. Uh, no, no, there's no, no rules. There's none. <laughs> there's none. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I love that thing that's very practical and... Uh, uh, very helpful. However, when when I reach into this barrel, I pull out a full size chandelier. Nice. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's crystal wow. and dangling. Um, and it's my eyes up. get like puss in boots eyes. Like, oh my god. But the best thing is, uh, on the top of it, there's kind of a, a handle with a trigger. And what you can do is you can shoot it up. And it'll attach itself to something. So if you need to swing across the room on a chandelier, oh. <laughs> it's a porta chandelier. I love yeah, it. Yeah, little grapple hook it's on like, the top. Yeah, it's a uh -oh. uh, chandelier hook gun. <laughs> and now, do you... <laughs> so many people would appreciate this. Yeah. Like Adam, so I, many I feel people like you love to swing from chandeliers. It's a thing. I, I feel like you've you've met my D and D players, my Monday mm -hmm. game. That one of them, like his goop, if there was ever a chandelier, he would uh, get a magical rope that he would tie to the roof and then around yeah. the chandelier just so he could swing and attack enemies with it. <laughs> so, like, you have, I, I thank God I, I understand physics because they wanted to know the real world implications of dropping a flaming chandelier on someone. Nice. 
And I picture uh, whenever No Tweet Sean would use that, he would be singing. <laughs> Chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> I can picture that too. <laughs> oh, Sean. <laughs> nice. Good. My box. Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's another show. <laughs> That's the after dark show, David. <laughs> <laughs> so you see a scarab. Cuz it's hmm. pulsing. I'm going to I'm going to pick it up. Okay. So as you pick it up, it starts to rub its wings together, and then outside there's a dust storm that takes place and start to, like the um the roof shingles start coming off <laughs> and the doors start banging. Hmm. I've seen this in a movie once. <laughs> uh, pretty soon, Brendan Fraser's going to run in and uh, uh. Tell, tell us we're going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever it rubs its wings, it causes a sandstorm. If you were to let it outside and it would begin to dig into the ground, then what would happen is there would be um, vines that come up from underneath and could grasp somebody. And nobody could really tell unless they were super perceptive that this bug was coming at them. So they could be grappled at any point in time. And with the scarab, they can also, um, if you crush them, which would be very sad. But if that was to happen, uh, then it could cause an earthquake to happen in your realm. You blew it because I was just about ready to crush it before you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to finish. I was like, I stop on it. No. Now, now I don't. Making a, making a call back to an old Thanks. what's in the box. I'm going to take out that book of laws that we have. Uh, never crush the scarab. Yeah. <laughs> Took a few years off my life there. Scarab it crusher. It. <laughs> it's nice. a dune buggy. Oh, Sean. <laughs> so cute. Yay. I get it. Dune <laughs> buggy. Oh. Mm. <laughs> nice. Very cool. I mean, TK, you can tell me I won. It's all right. <laughs> it's it's not. <laughs> Actually, I got I got I got to give this one to Adam for just the awesome uh, chandelier oh, grappling hook. Yeah. I know, I know. Because that is just you never know when you need to you know, make a great entrance. Just That's walk good. in, just shoot your chandelier. Chandelier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you need to wreck a wedding? Have a uh, grappling hook chandelier. <laughs> Make That's sure funny. that the uh, you know support beams are in place. Otherwise, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that could go tragically wrong. That's yeah. okay. It's magical. Oh, that's right. We need you to sign these waivers saying we're not responsible if you accidentally shoot at a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these things do happen. <laughs> True that. Mm -hmm. We 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 all played with Dak in various games. I mean, he shot me in the head for what a good year in uh, Fallout seventy six. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just saying. <laughs> uh, Dak is the uh, party killer, and he T P T. Uh, he likes to hit oh, hit his party killer. party killers, right? That's a rough name. His teammates. Yes, yeah, he, he does. Yeah. So, uh, how about has Nils been here this weekend, or or did he... yeah, he stopped in a few times? Dak? Yeah. Oh, good, good, fantastic. That's awesome. Nice. <laughs> it's but always no, good. Um... It's always good to see you know, Thread Raiders that we don't see all the time. We're all on like Discord yeah, different yeah. times, and, and then we had to do these streams, and you see everybody kind of in chat and just kind of hanging out. So it's nice. It is very nice. That's what I really like about the fundraisers, too, is it's not only for a good cause, but everybody comes together, yeah. you know, and you really start bonding with each other through the games that you're playing, and mm -hmm. you get to meet the community. It's just, I love it so much. That's why I really like doing it. Mm -hmm. So, Adam, are you going to work on getting to the online world? Will we get to see you stream one day? Yeah, I would love to. I would love to. Um, I just need to, uh, some some help maybe like a dummy's yeah. guide or something but uh yeah i'm i'm up for it i uh i agree with what you're saying earlier it's it's uh the experience of role playing kind of face to face is special but if you play online then that opens up much more possibilities so yeah, it um, does. Mm -hmm. yeah i'm definitely up for um getting some online gaming going 
Yeah, and it would be cool if like people who were like from your Patreon too, who ha all have the same library, they could get out like you know an RPG that they really like together, and then they could play mm -hmm. the game online, which is pretty neat. Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. that'd be Ooh, yeah, that's if a you concept. ever need help with that, yeah, if you ever need help with learning how to stream, we we do that here. We have yeah. a couple new streamers for the start event actually. Foon was their first time, and Reek was their first time dungeon mastering too. Live. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interested in that. That'd be awesome. I just went have? through uh, most of the threaders who were streaming this week who've never streamed before. I gave them little tutorials throughout last week. Like here, here's the stuff you got to do. Here's the things to look out for. Here's how to use Streamlabs OBS and just to set it up so it won't break on you ever. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the tips and tricks of make sure you load this thing at least once a week if you're streaming or not. Make sure it updates. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what's an important tip too that I just because I, I don't use Streamlabs, you know, the the program unless I'm doing this, you know. So it's what a couple times a year. Um. And and putting my loading Zoom or whatever you're using for this this video conference, got to load that first before you run um, OBS. Otherwise, my camera wouldn't work because it like takes over your camera if you load that first. Okay. And I just figured that out. Um, actually, I think it was Chet that told me about that because I was like, my camera's not working. It's like <laughs> close 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 OBS and then do do the camera first. I'm like, ah, okay, there it was. <laughs> and uh, tutorials, speaking of that, we're going to be doing a uh, podcasting tutorial as well. Um, yes, yeah, so it's in October. Yeah, we're, so it's, it's you know, we, we haven't picked an exact date yet, have we? Do we I don't yeah, think we did. We did. Yeah. yeah, the 11th. Oh, it's did we? The, it's in my calendar. You're amazing. It's a Friday. Let me check. Oh, boy. I would miss that. Uh, David Steele live. Hey, wow. I wrote it right there. Look, it says yeah, audio. Oh, you can't see that. This is audio. But stream. I believe. Fancy. <laughs> That's all the difference. Oh my God. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're gonna do um so anybody interested in audio editing, um mm -hmm. we're gonna do a little class. We're gonna have the free software Audacity um that you can download. Anybody can download it on Mac or PC. And then we'll go through some basics of audio editing. Um she so can just kinda some little shortcuts and things that I do when I edit. And I'll also demonstrate, I use Adobe Audition myself, uh, but you have to pay for that program. But um, just to give you some ideas and tips and tricks on how to do that. Um, so uh, so some people in our Three Rivers community talked about maybe helping out with the editing for our podcast. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a way for everybody to kind of see what I need to do, basically. So Yeah. yeah good and we also meet up with people in the community to learn how to stream. Uh, we have a Discord channel too, so if you need to find players or you are starting up a game and you need like ideas or concepts, we have brainstorming that happens in our Discord channel. So there's a lot of options there. It gets a little crazy, as you noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, <I> don't <laughs> but they are there. Yeah, it's a bit much sometimes. So, but you can always reach out to any one of us and be more than happy to help you. That's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. And you know what I love too, and I always tell people when people are talking about um, coming over to the Discord or you know, being uh, hooking up with Thread Raiders, um, don't be overwhelmed. You don't have to. You can you can take it uh, a little bit at a time because I know when uh, I think CA actually pulled me over into uh, and she even respected my wishes. Like she said, you know, she asked me first, hey, I was going to tag you in this thread, which which makes your notifications on your phone blow up because the Thread Raiders, which hence the name Thread Raiders, they would just blow up these threads and make them last for days, and it would just be tons of people on there. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I want, I want to be part of that. And uh, anyway, so that's cool. But you can uh, the controls with with Discord and Twitter, you can you know mute some of that stuff where you don't have to see all those notifications. Yeah, you can like mute with each the channel if you want to. You can yeah, like channel. Discord, I was overwhelmed when I first got into Discord. I'm like, this is insane. I ain't got time yeah. for this. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh, learning how to control some channels where I would get every notification and most of them I would mute and only when somebody reached out to me specifically and tagged me, then mm. I would get those. So it makes it much more manageable. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we have a couple discords now. Uh, one is for the RPG community and one is for video games. Not that you can't be in one or the other. Um, we're working on trying to combine the two worlds together because they mm -hmm. are very much separate. Um, so that's our hopes one day is that video gamers and RPGers can and come together. Um, a lot of video gamers 
play RPGs. Oh yeah. Just don't realize it because they don't see. Although if you play any any RPG anywhere. You can actually uh, go into the coding and activate the dice roller on the screen mm -hmm. to show you exactly what you're doing. Like uh, Skyrim, a lot of people are like, well, Skyrim's not like D and D. It's like, okay, go into the console of Skyrim on your computer and watch what happens when you attack. It's actually rolling against yeah. the a, a DC it sets up. Mm -hmm. You're playing D and D just on a computer. I love Skyrim. Yeah, I feel like there's so many different ways to to play RPGs now <laughs> so we have like a chat room i played rpg games literally on twitter where people just tweeted with each other for like, <laughs> yeah. I don't, like, I was, like what happened? <laughs> but we do we have the raspy jester tavern um chat in the discord uh, so that people can hang out there and they can role play whenever you want and you don't have to be there every day or every week you can just jump in make a character and just go for it um and then we have like a dice roller in chat which is pretty cool um but yeah I, even by email a bernie does that i believe he has mm -hmm. where you know people email each other and whenever they're free they get a chance to you know email each other to the play so it's like there's so many different options out there it's pretty cool yeah one of the things that's um on the rpg kitchen site it's not uh well loved or used at the, <laughs> at the moment to be fair but um i built play by post so forum based ah. role play oh, cool. um basically there's just two of us on there at the moment but uh, yeah <laughs> So how does it work for anybody who doesn't know how that what that means? So yeah, play by post is quite interesting. I I like it as a role play form because mm -hmm. um, you get to take your time. It's, it's it's not real time, so it has its drawbacks. But it's also kind of cool because um, you get time to kind of. Uh... <laughs> That's ironic. You get you have time to get the right words <laughs> together. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, yeah. You, you get to do word crafting and um, depending on who you're playing with, you might go more into your character's motivations, what they're thinking, feeling, rather than just saying, I do this or my character does this. Like, right. Uh, my character is uh, concerned about the this this uh, occurrence. Uh, the, the giant alligator is quite scary. Uh, he's worried for his life and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, so basically you just, you kind of, instead of saying, I go to the keep or say my character walks to the keep, you just type it and you write it. Um, but you can put in details to say, oh, the sky was blue, it's glorious weather, lovely day. Um, sometimes it's a bit weird because it, it's play by post can be really slow relatively. Yeah. Days to get through a few minutes of real time. Right. Um, and, but you might have someone like posting about the weather and then a few pages later, they're posting about the weather again. Um, because it's actually been a week between, so you don't remember, but actually in the actual world, it's been five minutes. Yeah. But someone's noticing the clouds again. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, as I say, it's slow. It's a lot slower than face-to-face. -face. Um, but the other good thing about it is uh, if you're that way inclined, you can have a lot of games going. Uh, at one point in a, a while ago, uh, when I had a bit more free time, I had <clears throat> I was in 40 games at once. 40 games, Wow. <laughs> How did you keep them all straight? Were you like the I same character? Right. No, I, sure. I got to get wings on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I was running 12 games and then, um, no, it's different characters in every one. Uh, wow. So how do you keep them all straight, especially if you're dungeon mastering all of them? Uh, well, you're notes. not really dungeon <laughs> mastering, <laughs> right? It, isn't it? Because it, it kind of the world takes on its own life, right? Um, so some of the games, it was nice and easy because they were quite hack and slash. Mm -hmm. So despite the, me saying that you can take your time and kind of really craft stuff and build a beautiful story, sometimes it's like, I hit the York. Um, and those are easy to keep up with because you just say what you're doing. Um, sometimes it gets hard. The, the one that was quite challenging is I started a superhero game uh, with about six or eight players. Mm -hmm. uh, they all had their own origins and they're all separate threads. The idea was to bring them together. But then as we got into it, it turned out that they didn't actually want to play together. <laughs> I ended up for years running it. I think for three years I ran it as um, like half a dozen solo threads. Jeez. So, yeah. Wow. So Jaren in chat said that they really enjoy that that type, that method of playing the games, but sometimes the replies take too long. So yeah. do you have like a timeline for each one? Yeah, so uh, generally what I do, like if I'm running a game, I will say at the start, um, 
expectation is this. So normally, for example, I would say something like uh, expect three posts a week. You know, you can always say if you're not going to be available, you can't do it. But otherwise, it's three posts a week. Or um, one game I had years ago, which I really loved. Uh, there was four of us who were just available like all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we were posting uh, several times. I think in the first few months, the the chat thread ran to ran to about 10,000 posts. Wow. We were Jeez. posting several times a day. So combat, like a typical D&D combat could, in the play by post could take weeks. We were getting through them in a day. <laughs> wow. Bam, 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 bam. But yeah, generally, um, basically you have to have the agreement. Getting back to the real question, you have to have an agreement as a group. Like, are we going to be posting every day, once a week, when we feel like it? Mm -hmm. And just having that kind of agreement in place so that everyone's on the same pace. Because yeah. it can be frustrating if someone's posting every day, two, three times a day, and someone's posting once a week, and you're in the yeah. middle of a conversation. Right. Or a combat, right. and you're waiting yeah. on this other person, and, and you're like, yeah, I want to go, I'm, I'm ready to post. And sometimes people will say, uh, I ask um, Jane, uh, where, where should we go next? And then you're waiting for Jane to reply, saying that, and then a day passes, and then you have, uh, I consider what I have for breakfast. Right. <laughs> right. No one said anything. It's like ponders writing poetry or something. <laughs> it's all these posts because you're waiting for the person. No time has actually really passed in game. So yeah, it's tricky. It's got its uh, it's got its issues, but I I really like it as a as a well as an art form as a, a way to role play. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. So I think... if somebody in chat wanted to join these games, could they? How would they do that? How would they RPG get Kitchen dot com? No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's RPG dot kitchen. Okay. RPG dot um, kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. When I was talking about the top level domain thing, uh, you know, way back an hour ago or something. Um, uh, yeah, no, the best way if uh, if anyone's interested, uh, get in contact via uh, RPG Kitchen Twitter or via the Discord. Um, cool. Because I'm always up for running games. I haven't done it in a while, um, but I'm always up for running games. But you have some going on now, right? You have it on the website. Oh yeah, I've got um, a couple of games that have been going. Uh, it's just me and another person. The, the game's been going about ten years. Wow. And you let could somebody just jump into that one? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> gotcha. We're at max now. We're at max. No, but uh, mm -hmm. I'll be happy to start another game. You start another one, yeah. Mm -hmm. You just open up like another forum channel or something. Is that how it works? Yeah, just start another, start new, uh, start new game, start new thread. Yeah. Um, so I think it feels like like if everybody, uh, kind of conservative way, like not like you were doing like a bunch of posts a day, but if a group of people, like say like you know five or ten people were to do it, maybe just uh, an expectation like everybody post at least once a day, that'd be kind of doable, right? Yeah. 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 And then if you did that, would you would you have to like wait like a turn based kind of thing? Would you have to wait for somebody to take their turn? <clears throat> so some games I played in, some people do kind of stick fairly rigidly to the rules yeah. um, for example for um, any any game with initiative and there's combat um, they'll stick fairly rigidly to the rules where I was a lot more fluid uh, basically I would do for want of a better word I'll do monsters players monsters players and people post in whatever order they're able to you know people come online and they say oh I attack the orc or whatever and then someone maybe the mage comes on and go oh, I'll fireball them but don't stick to initiative order because <clears throat> that can really slow things down. Right. So I did open up in chat um, some questions that they have for either um, the host or for, well, I guess we're the hosting, <laughs> for <laughs> our guest and our yeah. host today. Um, so we do have a couple, if you don't mind, Adam. Um, the mm. first one was from Sean. What color underwear do you wear? I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> I filtered those out. Um, they want to know if you have any plans to expand with RPG Kitchen. Uh, yes, thank you for asking. <laughs> no, yes. uh, Stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarter next year, right? The Kickstarter yep. next year for the um, for the game, and also looking at this stage, uh, potentially resurrecting the editor idea, the thing that actually kicked us off in the first place. Uh, I still think that's useful to about 
six or so people around the world but that includes me i really want to use it so i should finish building it so i can use it um, yeah be potentially available for other people uh also thinking of setting up a uh digital online shop selling Ooh. pdfs i noticed too you have an etsy shop right is that what you do with the shirts and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. i've got that at the moment uh with the merch right uh, but potentially having a digital shop t kind of tied into the library so that would be actually selling other people's content again mm. That's nice cool. so another question they had was how can we help you meet the needs of the people you're feeding what can we do for you can we help with advertising or spreading the word yeah so spreading the word is always good uh and that is nice because that's free. That's easy to do. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> tell your friends about RPG Kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, when we do the Kickstarter, uh, tell your friends about that and get them to tell their friends and their friends. Oh. Um, but also, we do have a Etsy shop, as Dave mentioned. We we do have some merch, some very attractive T-shirts, got some lovely designs in there, and also there's the Patreon. You can support the RPG Kitchen Patreon from as little as one dollar a month okay and you can have my my little cauldron you can keep that that's my way of supporting oh, thank you. <laughs> that's so nice <laughs> <laughs> so if <laughs> if you were a gelatinous cube <laughs> uh, which cube would you be what would you be made out of that would have to be strawberry, <laughs> strawberry lime jelly. Ah, strawberry, Ooh. strawberry Ooh. and lime. Strawberry lime. Nice. Why mm. strawberry lime? Because that's Tastes who good. I am as a person. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to good. question that. I didn't yeah. realize it was more personal. Not everything's pineapple, CA. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Back. It's hard to believe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you have podcasts, you can put supplements books. Oh, you can put supplements books on Etsy as well. Uh, there that. aren't. Uh, there aren't on Etsy. As far really? as I know, that does physical stuff. I'm surprised. You might do digital Quite stuff. Honestly. Oh, print on, on demand. demand. Oh, print on demand. Print on okay. demand. Right. Yeah, I don't know enough about Etsy. I never used it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, now, there's no plans for print on demand at the moment, simply because. Uh, of the challenges of print on demand in time that might become a thing but yeah no you can even you can do um um just even like a pdf or something that you can sell them on etsy um because i actually looked at a couple of things on there and i was thinking i was going to get one thing and i saw I, luckily i didn't buy it and i was like why is it so cheap and then it'll be like a design like for i was looking at puppets or something and it was just a design like so i could get the thing and then sew it myself i'm like oh that's why it's so cheap <laughs> <laughs> It's all coming together now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Didn't so know that. that. <laughs> uh, so it looks like that's all our questions that we have in chat as of now. Um, so I guess what we can do is we can just go around and just introduce, or well, not introduce ourselves, say goodbye <laughs> and let me sleep. <laughs> clearly uh. I cannot make sentences. Um, and let's start with TK. Uh, you all know me. I'm TK. You see my ugly mug every week. Uh, you can find me at Kentos88 and uh, join me and CA for the Nightmare Stream, which will be restarting sometime in October. Our lives, just got, <laughs> our lives got super busy with the, the fundraiser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fundraiser. And my anniversary is on one of our uh, stream weekends, so I'll be celebrating that. <laughs> but we'll be playing uh, Fatal Frame 2, which Again, I've not played this game in 20 years, so you can hear me scream like a little girl as I <laughs> try to figure out why is this thing keep killing me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and what about you, David? Uh, and no, I will not be joining you on your horror stream um, because I get scared too easily. That's okay. Um, I'll protect you. <laughs> if you could see, I'm at David O'Steele uh, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um Part of the Steel Empire uh, podcast production network, Steel, S T E E L E, empire.com. All our websites go through there Magic and Steel, Thread Raiders has a link on there, Arc City, Audio Drama, and so on and so forth. Um, 
keep it in in mind for the future, um, Adam. I'd like to. Uh, is it Adam or Alex? Mr. Adam. RPG Kitchen, Adam. Adam. Yeah, yeah. Adam. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I would like to do another uh, show. I, I've already have some stuff in the can. It's uh, interview space. It's interview dot space is uh, another podcast, and I like to interview people because I'm interested in we, like the, some of the questions I asked you. Just people from different countries, different cultures, things that me as a stupid uh, white guy American, you know, like okay, this is my concept of. So explain to me what your world's like, you know, from your perspective. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and boxers or briefs, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> that's a question for boxes. you. Boxes. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Nice. Yeah. All right. Now for you, Adam. Where can people find okay. you? I'm Adam or Alex from RPG Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. You can find us on RPG.Kitchen, which uh, is a confusing choice. Uh, RPGKitchen.com is probably a better idea, but that's not where it is, so don't look there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's uh, not a site for... At RPG Kitchen, um, and on Patreon, and on Etsy for RPG Kitchen. Well, that's easy to find. I post the links, too, in chat, just in case anybody wants to click on them or save nice. them. We will and also... I... Go ahead. You're Sorry, good. and I also should say apologies uh, to the fine fellow who did the um, art for the Twitter banner. Oh, uh, did you find them? Arrow Odd, and that's at RPG Home Brewery on Twitter. Ooh. And he's a brilliant artist. He did the, uh, the mm. banner and also the icon uh, and a couple of other things for me. Oh, they did yes. the logo too. Now, did you come up with the design for it, or they created it all from scratch for you? Uh, all for, he's done it. It's all his work. But was it like your idea for the design, or it's just all him? Oh no, I'm like, uh, yeah, I need something cool, please. <laughs> nice. It was and very cool. Really I like it. Yeah, it was, it was really good. We went through some iterations. We had some ideas. Um, I actually put something out on on Twitter when it, it came down to the last final few logo ideas, and um, uh, unfortunately, one of them it turned out if you looked at it the right way with the right kind of mind, it looked quite rude. Um, nice. Yeah, sadly, didn't go with that option, but. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was, he's, he was brilliant and uh, yeah, came up with all the drafts and helped me kind of uh, get my non-art brain into the right place. Now you should, uh, a, a idea for Patreon, you should do like a special edition shirt with that uh, not so nice graphic on it. Just... <laughs> no. It could, like it could be a big seller. It could be a big seller. edition. Yeah. Uh, phallic potato. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, lady? All right. Well, I am chaotic anarchy because <laughs> there's an extra A in there. Extra A's for awesome. Yes. Uh -huh. um, you can find me on Thread Reader Podcast, obviously, uh, anywhere on Discord, Twitter, any social media. I'm, I'm all over the place, quite honestly. Um, so don't be afraid to say hi. I'm really excited to see everybody. I'm glad to be here today. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who came out to the stream today. Um, and for all of your donations, it really means a lot. I'm going to look now to see where we're yeah. at because it's been a hot minute. Yeah. I was just so excited about Adam coming to visit. We are at $1,322 and we could nice. not have raised that without you. So thank you so much. Thank you to our moderators who have been crazy all up in chat keeping it going keeping it real jordan seriously you're a blessing <laughs> with the giveaways yes. and the questions you nice. have been working tirelessly behind the scenes with us and i cannot thank you enough that just means so much to us yes yes and thank you to our donors um who uh tabletop loot is one of our sponsors as well um, they have donated some dice to the cause. Uh, Ice Cream Dice, there are some dice giveaways out. And they are coming out with their new Halloween edition. So make sure you keep a lookout for that. I know Candy Corn is out, and you can purchase it on their website Ooh. now. And I know that Tabletop Loot and Ice Cream are pairing up to do a Kickstarter. And it's a little hush-hush. I'm just letting you know it is out there. So keep an eye out for that, for, out for that as <laughs> well. Blah, blah. blah. And um, we also had a couple RPGs donated as well. And as I'm gaining spit, 
to try and find. <laughs> I have my little thing here. Where is it? Now, did we do any giveaways in the chat like we were going to? We did, yeah. yes. So who um, won, did you say? We did give, I do not say. <laughs> Jordan, who won? <laughs> I know Obi Sean won the t-shirt for RPG Kitchen. Oh, nice. And Zynar. And Zynar won a set of dice. Nice. Yes, I believe from Tabletop Loot. And I do not believe I found, oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay, so PG Gamer team donated Tomb of Amazing Creatures, volume one and two. Um, we've been giving them out all weekend, one per stream. Um, Power Up Gamers is a place for disabled players to feel safe in discussing how their disabilities affect their gaming and tabletop role-playing games, and to have players and DMs who are willing to work with them to meet their needs. So they also strive to bring awareness of disability issues to the larger RPG community as a whole, with ways oh. to handle these issues appropriately and non-offensively. What's the name of that again? Uh, Power Up Gamers. Power Up Gamers. Is it? How do yeah. we find them? Is that a... Website? They actually found me, and they've been hanging out this whole weekend. Jaron D and D, he's in chat right now talking about. Is it, it. is it a website or how, how do we find them? So if you go on Twitter, um, PG Gamer Team, you'll nice. be able to find them there. This particular Tomb of Amazing Creatures is on Drive Through RPG. You can actually buy it there. Um, they also go to different conventions. They have a Facebook page. If you go to their Twitter, you can click on the Facebook page. It takes you right there as well. Nice. And they have a lot going on coming. That's up awesome. Too. So, Jaron, if you want to post that in the chat, too, of where you're going to be hanging out or where you're going to be or give us, you know. Do it. Do it down. now. We'd love to know about it. And I will read it. We'd also like to thank Nunspa, who also donated Arcana's Forged and Magic Reforged. Um, they're from Paradigm Concepts. Yay. You look up Nunspa online, and their links and websites are there as well. Nunsi. And they've been popping up. <laughs> Nunspa. Uh, popping up in chat here and there as well and we'll continue to do the giveaways and yeah i think i got everybody in there nice and yep. stay tuned because tk is going to do the rpg wing challenge i'm super uh, hyped for that i can't crazy. wait to see it. Uh, we're crazy. labeling it uh hot nerds eating hot wings nice hot wings. <laughs> yeah. now you're gonna take your shirt off while you're doing it? <laughs> <laughs> well, so... are you wearing a kilt because yes that. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna throw the kilt's actually in the dryer right now. Uh -huh. uh, the uh -huh. reason I had to run upstairs is I put my wings in the yow, oven, yow. and uh, one of the sauces I have is a chocolate ghost pepper sauce. My nose itched. Uh. Oh no! <laughs> so, of course, you rubbed your nose. I had sauce on my hand. Uh. Like, oh my god, my nose is burning. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to run up and get some. Uh, I have a vapo, like those little Vicks pens. Yeah. So I just shoved up my nose and just like snorted. It's like, okay, burning <laughs> stuff. Now I can see. <laughs> because that's not even the hottest of the wings I made. Uh, that's like number three on the hot scale of how hot am I willing to go? Boy, you're crazy. <laughs> and there, uh, there are six sauces, and one of them I'll just do a shot of if somebody donates 100 bucks. Going to be insane. Uh, so Jaron did respond, uh, said that they will be at a con October 11th to the 13th. It's a three-day online convention for the Butterfly Project, nice. which I've never actually heard of. So I'm going to have to look that up. You better there. look that up. Online convention. I want to know all yeah. about that. See, maybe we should start that. Start that way. Start with an online yes, convention. Yes, we talked about that. Into... So yeah. you make sure you check that out. I'm going to. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, they're also um, doing prize support for, which I can't pronounce, EtherCon, which is another <laughs> online convention that we can look up also. So. Nice. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming out today. We really appreciate it. And hopefully you'll hang in there for the next stream. Uh, we will have other things going on all the way up until like 930 tonight. So. Nice. <laughs> and who's closing us out? Legendary Realms or something, right? But yeah. yeah. Legendary Realms. They're doing their weekly word. Nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, the host, Draxus, knows what he did. Yes, and Daquan mm -hmm. Game Army is running Tomb of Annihilation. Nice. Done. Adam, thank you so much. And thank the website again, we RPG really kitchen, right? Dot kitchen. Yes. yes, it is. Thank you very much for having me on. You're it's welcome. Visual. <laughs> it's been my pleasure, my pretties. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you again soon. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye. See you guys.